Hey, February 3rd here. We're at the FSU Weather Center tracking some storms uh, moving into the region. Yeah, absolutely. We're keeping a close eye on them. I'm Casey Cloud. I'm Matt Reagan. We've got a full show for you here today uh, talking about everything. It's hump day. So we're recapping what we saw at the beginning of the week and also talking about this cold front pushing into our area. Yeah, that's going to bring us some heavy rain later on this evening here on campus in the metro area as well. And a flash flood watch even in effect until 7 a.m. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking a lot about this during the entire show. We've got weather stretching from the east coast to the west coast and everywhere in between today. Yeah, we're going to be monitoring that very closely. Uh, quite a bit going on, so make sure you keep it tuned here for the next 28 minutes or so as we'll be giving you those latest details that you need to plan out the rest of your week. Maybe if you're traveling as well, you'll find out what's going on in the nation and some of the major hubs. Yep, absolutely. We've got a lot of traveling coming up, especially with the Super Bowl. We've got the Super Bowl. Super Bowl weather is looking great, though. We're, we kind of talked about that a little bit yesterday, <laughs> how it's going to be such a gorgeous day out there. Yeah, it should be really nice here in Santa Clara. We'll be talking about that more on Friday. Jake and I will in our sports mm -hmm. weather segment. So that's to be exciting to get into talking about that big game between the Panthers and the Broncos. Yeah, there you have it. We're already <laughs> teasing the Friday show. It's almost, it's a couple days until Friday. Um, but once we get through this little line of watching the radar here very closely, uh, some heavy rain could be on the way. But first, we're going to break it all down for you in a quick overview with Colleen. It as the week goes on, but luckily they won't be as low as what we've seen in the past. And as we move on to the satellite and radar, we have Montgomery is getting hit right now in Pensacola. So the uh, west of Florida is seeing the effects. And as it moves on to the northwest, the squall line will increase the uh, chances of rain in Tallahassee and Valladosta. But luckily, down in South Florida, it won't be um, hit very much. So shout out to my mom. <laughs> you won't get rain. Um, and as we go into tonight's forecast, it is 68, 90% um, a chance of rain. Bring, it, bring your jacket. It's going to be very cloudy. A lot of rain tonight going into tomorrow morning. Now the weather headlines today, rain for tomorrow as the lows dip into the upper 30s and rain chances will leave by Saturday, clearing up for the weekend. And now as we take it into watches and warnings, as we have all over Tallahassee, we have a lot of um, flash flood warnings that will rain into an effect till tomorrow at 7 a.m. And as you see the darker Christmassy kind of color, that is um, flash flood warning, um, but a lot of rain is for the lighter color. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Colleen. That is fantastic. We're getting a sneak peek of the watches and warnings mm -hmm. here. We have a very short desk here. We're going to be sending it back out in just a second. One thing we wanted to mention, though, before we left real quick is it's National Signing Day. We did pretty well. Yeah, exactly. Number one class. So great news there for the Seminoles. Hopefully we can keep our tremendous football success up. But let's go ahead and now take it out to Nicole for another look at your local forecast. Thank you, Matt and Casey. And again, as Colleen said, we got um, a flood, flash flood warning throughout most of our area that is going to stick around until around 7 a.m. And the current conditions, we are sitting at a nice 72, although it is a little bit uncomfortable considering it's so humid out. So make sure to wear some hairspray. All right, so as you can see, that um, cold front kind of pushed into the area. Um, it's just kind of going to dissipate all on the, our area, and it is going to be quite cloudy for the rest of the night. So, the, as again, I said, the current temperatures of Tallahassee are uh, 72, um, pretty much all across the board, low 70s, except for like um, Bainbridge and like those other South Georgia cities we're sitting at like low, or high 60s and high 70s. We have... I mean, I'm sorry, it is going to be quite blustery out for the rest of the night and tonight's forecast is going to be a lot warmer from what we will see in the next few days. Now again that cloudiness is going to keep those nice warm temperatures around 
our area, just like keep the warmth on the ground. And for tomorrow, um, we will have slight rain showers until around the afternoon, pretty much 12 o'clock. And for tomorrow, your day planner, it, again, it will be raining tomorrow morning, so make sure to bring your umbrella. The rain is gonna stick around until like early afternoon. And for your five day forecast, it, it'll be quite, it'll be quite rainy tomorrow, like I said, but then it's gonna dissipate on Friday and come back on Saturday. So um, I'll hand it over to Colleen again. Hi, yes, now we have the current radar and warnings as we see this squall line get uh, close to Tallahassee in Florida and moving up to the northeast. We have a few flash flood warnings taking effect into local Tallahassee. So you see this whole band of area is in warning for flash flood. Now that means to be careful driving, be careful outside regardless tonight, but it will dissipate by tomorrow morning. And over by New Orleans, there's a few spotted showers there right now that have a lot of rain and heavy rain. Now the 24 hour temperature change. Over time, Tallahassee has not seen much temperature change, but Orlando, same, and Miami, all of Florida is just remaining very the same. But as that cold front will come in, it will increase and the temperature change will drop. But up in Little Rock, that has a 22 degree temperature change. They're seeing a lot of cold air going into their area currently and in Montgomery and Atlanta. Um, so as this 24 hour temperature change and the current dew point in Tallahassee is 68. That means muggy and disgusting outside. We do not want to be outside right now. Load up the hairspray because it is very humid. 66 in Orlando, Savannah, 52 in Montgomery. It's just the dew point is very, very high and relative to the temperature lately. So that means higher humidity. Now the lightning strikes, there has been a lot of lightning strikes reported in Tallahassee or later tonight and up in Savannah, up, like this basically traced the whole squall line that is going up into the northeast as over the night and as we take a look into the relative humidity, yes 87 percent, that is very very high. Do not forget the hairspray today ladies. 70 in Montgomery, 82 in Savannah, very very gross outside. Now the current wind chill 72 in Tallahassee, 80 in Orlando. Actually, Orlando is uh, hotter than Miami. There we go. 72 in Savannah, 62 in New Orleans. Very, eh, kind of, not really that chilly. We have seen worse in Tallahassee this winter. Um, and now we take a look into tonight's forecast. Tonight's forecast, it will be a lot of rain, 52 in Tallahassee. It won't break below in the 40s, but in New Orleans, it will be in the 40s. So make sure, especially being along the water, bring a jacket. It's going to be very cold. 42 in Atl Atlanta, very cold, very cold for Atlanta. And Wilmington, 63. So Little Rock, okay, Little Rock takes the record for 28 now. And as we take it on over to the desk for Casey and Matt. All right, thank you very much, Colleen. This has been a, a crazy weather day here where storms are just inching very close. We see it on radar. Um, but we also wanted to turn our attention from the rain real quick back to football. Yeah, exactly. FSU, uh, with number one signing class, really looking ahead to this next season. And, uh, man, you'll be here next year for that, and it's going to be right. exciting. Yeah, we're going to miss you, Casey. But, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, we, we still got a couple months left with the seniors, so we're not going not gonna to be sad right now. But we're going to look forward to this football schedule because we have it right in front of us going off that big day in recruiting to a big schedule next year. Yeah, open it up with Ole Miss, a high-quality SEC opponent. They just won the Sugar Bowl about a month ago. So it'll be exciting there in Orlando. Yeah, absolutely. And then we're also talking about uh, USF. We're playing Miami. Um, and then, of course, Florida, Syracuse, Boston College, all the big names that you know. going to be a lot of big games. Yeah, Hurricanes, Gators, two of the big ones there. Uh, those will be both uh, really important games to determine how the Noles will do in this upcoming season. We also have the Clemson game, of course. They made the national championship, defending ACC champs. That's on October 29th, right here at Doak Campbell Stadium. Yeah, and then, of course, Friday Night Lights for the Boston College game. Friday night game, and that's going to be, I believe it's Veterans Day weekend. Um, 
not 100% sure on that one, but should be a good game, mm -hmm. especially on Friday. But I'm going to talk about the national weather here real quick, um, switching it back <laughs> over to the wall, because we, there's quite a bit going on across the entire country. A lot of cool air, a lot of, uh, a lot of, bit of, a lot of changes going on. We had a bit of a January thaw, um, really warming things up a little bit, and now that's all starting to turn, especially with this big cold front. We're talking about big cold front. It stretches all the way from the northeast all the way down into Texas. And you're going to see that here on the satellite and radar in just a second. Well, here it is. Look at that. A huge storm swirling away up in the Great Lakes region all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico. And really, this has been a headache for a lot of people. And this had the potential to be a very big storm in terms of severe weather. Luckily, we did not see as many tornadoes as we were. We, were, we thought we could possibly see this time last week. We did see a few. Um, so our thoughts and prayers do go out to everyone affected by those storms. But this is starting to move its way through our region now, followed by this big open area of high pressure, this big dip in the jet stream, bringing all that cool weather down and into the southeast. Now, this is the time of year where we start to see the, south, the east coast get a little bit cooler than the west coast. You get a, a lot of warm air piling into the west coast and then a lot of cool air diving down into the east coast. And we can see that with a lot of the watches and warnings. Way up here, we've got some winter storm advisories down in uh, parts of Colorado near Denver, just north of Denver. We've got some blizzard warnings as well. And then we look towards the southeast. That's where we do see all of those flood watches that, and flood watches and warnings for all those river watches and warnings as well all throughout the southeast. The central part of the country is really looking nice right now. Not any warnings to speak of there. Now, water vapor imagery shows the tail of really where this drier air is starting to filter in. We've got this bit of a little bit moist air towards the northern, north central part of the United States. That's going to possibly put down some snow flurries in uh, some of the areas of Montana, even parts south of there, and, and parts of Idaho as well. But that dry air is starting to filter in, slowly inching its way towards our area, and that'll start to move through. And even look at this. Oh, my goodness. Negative 2 degree dew point in Denver. This hasn't been seen in a very long time. I'm getting excited here. This is like <laughs> me and thunder snow. Here it is. Negative 2 degree dew point. That's very, very low. That's that uh, feel in the atmosphere. Feels like this. Really, that cool, really low dew point starting to filter in. That's going to start getting into our area in a little bit. Now, you can see where the cold front's been. All this blue and purple showing the big temperature difference this time yesterday. The wind chills saying the same story. The low dew points, the wind chills, it's all there. 20s, 6 in Minneapolis. Billings, I always picked on them last year. I'm still going to pick on them this year. 24 degrees right now as the wind chill. That feels like temperature. Now, LaGuardia, the only airport checking in with a few delays. That's going to be uh, as well as JFK. Of course, the volume there, it's the New York City area, and that's where we're seeing those delays as well. Tonight, a cold night across most of the country. Florida, the envy of the entire country with the warm temperatures. Let's look at tomorrow. Another cool day as that cold front starts to filter in. But now we're going to send it over to Casey to bring it back home just a little bit. Yeah, thanks so much, Matt. Let's get right into what's going on across our viewing circle right now. Today we did get up to 72 degrees at the International Airport, a little bit above average, but that's going to change as we get into the next several days. As I see in the forecast, that low as well, way below, I mean, way above average, uh, 27 degree departure from that. So, yeah, really warm conditions because of all that cloud cover around. Now, broadening it out, we do see temperatures region wide. Most areas in the 70s, 72 Tallahassee, 70 St. Marks. Perry sitting at 75, but you can see where the cold front is. These temperatures are getting a lot cooler back here. Jackson County, 58 in Mariana. Green colors indicating some of these cooler temperatures. They're on the way, and they make things nice and reflect, refreshing around. But first, you got to get through some of these weather conditions that are with the front, and that is an area of some heavy rain and some thunderstorms as well. This stretches here from parts of southwest Georgia, so Bainbridge down to Quincy, Wilma as well. And this will be making its way closer to the Ward of Tallahassee area over the next hour or so. So if you're on camp, and make sure you have that umbrella handy, as you'll probably be getting wet here pretty soon if you don't have that, as these storms will pack a pretty good punch. 40, 50 mile an hour winds can be expected. Not expected anything severe, but it can't be rolled out, as Matt and I were talking about earlier. It's something you just need to keep tuned with. We'll give you the latest if there are any warnings issued, of course, right here on FSC Weather and on some of our social media accounts and live stream. Now, lightning-wise, well, you do see uh, some of our wider strikes. These have happened in less the last few minutes. Now, we've started to see a little bit of a lessening in these over the last little bit, but he's still on a general directory toward Tallahassee here over the next hour, and Tallahassee lightning could occur here, so just make sure you're aware of that. 
But right now, I always just know what the Wilma and your Quincy, Bainbridge as well. There are some around, and those winds, well, they're coming here in toward our area. You do see nine miles an hour Tallahassee, eight in Wilma. Little gust here there near the coast, Apalachicola, 15. So some of those starting to make their way in towards some of our southwestern counties. I see about us as well, they're pretty high. Now, if you took cast, we do see this line of storminess. We'll be making it through here over the next few hours, but it'll kind of linger around as there'll still be some moisture available for this. So we'll be watching this closely here to see if we have some flooding risk around. There is that flash flood watch until tomorrow morning, so it's at least something to keep an eye on. But after this passes through, it'll be nice and cool in time for that weekend. Great weather conditions around. It should be just beautiful around the viewing circle to go out and enjoy it. It will be just great around. So just really enjoy that weekend. Enjoy going to the beach as well. Of course, uh, tonight, 68 degrees, Tallahassee. Make sure you have a rain jacket. Tomorrow, some of those storms will be strong in the morning hours. And, of course, that seven-day forecast where you do see those temperatures relatively nice after that front passes through. But right now, I'll take it back over to the desk where we have Nicole and Colleen. Has the weather got you feeling down lately? It really has. Yes. It's terrible. It has been disgusting outside all over the nation. But luckily, we have seven tips for you on how to beat the winter blues. Yeah, so like, what, what's the first tip you have for everyone to stay positive in this time of very disastrous <laughs> weather? <laughs> um, I usually like to go exercise. That, that's my number one yes. um, tip for how to beat the winter blues. Also, like doing light therapy, I hear, is pretty well, too. I don't know how yeah. you're going to do that with these clouds, but it might help. Yeah, yeah. If, if there is sun out there, get the vitamin D. You know, listen to music. It definitely boosts your mood. And chocolate. Chocolate is very, very yummy. For sure. Yes. Now let's take it on over to Ulysses. Aline. Right now, currently, throughout the Sunshine State, we have 72 degrees in Tallahassee, 73 in Jacksonville. The cloud cover very strong, especially with the northern half of the state, thanks to that frontal system. The rest of the Sunshine State, however, very warm into those upper 70s to low 80s at this hour, and the sunshine will continue for them throughout the rest of the afternoon and into the early evening. But that line of storms with that frontal system continues to march down over Pensacola, now getting ready to go into Tallahassee, so I-10 will be a rocky and soggy commute all throughout the evening hours. Jacksonville, Orlando, that will be eventually towards the overnight and early morning hours. So I-4, you guys are going to be next tomorrow morning. And eventually Miami will get into this action by the time we get into the afternoon hours. The frontal system, well in its path. You can see, especially in Pensacola, the northerly winds have started. That cooler air and drier air has officially began. The warm air ahead of the front has brought a lot of that moisture and just that instability for those thunderstorms to bring that lightning and strong winds possible. And even isolated tornadoes could be possible all throughout the Sunshine State tomorrow. So just be on the lookout and have that NOAA weather radio with you. Temperature change, 8 degrees cooler in Pensacola as of this time yesterday. But the rest of the Sunshine State, very uniform with temperatures just about 0 degrees. So re no real changes whatsoever. That dry air has finally exited from the weekend now into the Atlantic. However, that moist air ahead of the frontal system now pushing a lot of that green all throughout, especially over Tallahassee and parts of southern Georgia and, Carolina, and South Carolina, thanks to that frontal system. And the dry air is just beginning to usher in into Mississippi and Louisiana, and that will eventually push its way towards the Sunshine State by the time we get into our Friday. Humidity valley is very high in the northern half of the state, 80% a little more comfortable towards the southern half of the state into the 60s and 70s, but those numbers will change throughout the overnight hours. Closer look, Dothan, Tallahassee, Wilma, uh, Valdosta, Ta uh, Thomasville, eventually will be Live Oak, Lake City, Gainesville. They will all be under the gun for this line of the squall line of thunderstorms from this frontal system. So it's going to be a soggy night. There is a flash flood watch in effect till tomorrow morning. Just remember, turn around. Don't drown. Give yourself extra minutes driving. Very clear over Orlando and Tampa. Miami, excellent weather as well. But conditions will deteriorate all throughout the Sunshine State tomorrow as those clouds will begin to build all throughout the daytime. And with that daytime heating, more thunderstorms could flare up as well. A last look at the Sunshine State. All the storms continue to be in the north, but it's all going south. And it's all going downhill from here. Tonight's forecast, 45 degrees in Pensacola, 75 in Key West, 60s and 50s in between. 
And by the time we go into tomorrow, the clouds will dominate, especially for majority of the state. It will be more sunnier towards the south, but the rain will eventually get to them towards the late afternoon and early evening hours. So the raincoat will become your best fr friend. And the good news is by the time we get to Friday, the rain will disappear before another chance of rain into the weekend. And eventually, good times will return and cooler weather for next week. But however, we're going to send it over to Casey with another segment. Thanks so much, Ulysses. Let's get in here to our webcam Wednesday. First, we wanted to start off. It is Black History Month. We had Janice Huff and Dr. Marshall Shepard both stop by last semester here at FSU, two of our alumni. It was great to have them here, just kind of looking back at some memories of this from last semester. Now, let's go ahead and get in toward your webcams. We'll take you up to Boston College now. We do see 50 degrees. Well, that was what it was yesterday. You're only getting up to 53 today. Pretty cool conditions, but for them, that's actually relatively warm up there in the northeast. Uh, nice sunrise here. You'll watch it just kind of bear with me here. You'll see it just great coming up here in the bottom right of your screen. Uh, beautiful conditions there at the university up there at Boston College that is. Uh, in there in parts of Massachusetts. Now, as we go ahead and look at your webcam here on campus, well, we did see some interesting skies last night, fog around first off. If you're going out, you did see a lot of those conditions. So just, uh, it was nice to have those beams in pr place, of course, having those low beams so you could penetrate through that fog. And as we made it through the day, you could see this fog starting to clear out, making for relatively nice conditions around. Uh, of course, we did get up to 70 degrees today here on campus. Yesterday, we got up to 77, though. So a cooling trend is being noted. Most of that being indicated because of all these clouds around today, it made for the temperature not to fluctuate too much as I see in the almanac earlier. Now, as we go ahead and look at your tennis forecast here for the Knowles, of course, at the Scott Spiker Tennis Center tomorrow, game against the University of Florida. They're number three in the country, folks. So get out and support your Knowles tennis team. 55 degrees will be the temperature there. Make sure you pack the court. It will be a little bit rainy around, though, so make sure you have those ponchos on hand if you are going out. But it's to be nice. Hopefully, we can get the victory over the Gators there tomorrow. Now, as we go ahead and look at your women's basketball forecast on your Sunday, we'll see 56 degrees. It'll be clear, nice conditions against the Clemson Tigers. Hopefully, we can get another victory for Coach Sue Simmerow's squad. They're looking to improve on a nice streak that they have going, and hopefully that does continue as we get in toward these next few days and into toward next week as well. Some big games coming up. Playing against North Carolina and Notre Dame here in the next few weeks. So some critical matchups here at home for FSU. Now, real quick, before I send it back over toward the desk, I do want to remind you there is a flash flood watch in effect here till 7 a.m. tomorrow in this green color. Uh, just make sure you're all aware of these flooding potential around. And if you do see flooding of area roadways, just make sure you keep an eye on those and stay safe out there. But right now, I'll take it back over to the desk where we have Colleen and Nicole. Thank you so much, Casey, and thank you for making sure that we are all nice and safe from those floods. Yes. And so tonight is something very special to me. It is Relay for Life's pep rally at 7.30 at the Globe Auditorium. Yes. Have you ever participated in Relay before, Colleen? I have. I have. I'm new to this university, so back when I was in high school, I did. And I did participate, and I think it's a great cause to support everyone because that disease is becoming more and more common and affecting everyone, really. It for sure is, and it's so nice how the whole entire university comes together and you know tries to raise money for this amazing cause. Yes. And don't forget that Friday is Strike Out for Cancer, and that is going to be at Crenshaw Lanes, so help out Relay there. And we are going to go back to Matt, Matt at the desk. Thank you so much. I'm really excited for all the Relay for Life festivities. <laughs> that was a great desk. I'm really loving this one. Let's look at those current conditions, though, one more time across Tallahassee. Right now, we're seeing the overcast skies. We're seeing the clouds build in. We're seeing the rain approach. Currently 72 degrees, but look at that humidity, 87%. That means it's really quite humid out there right now. And then those winds are also starting to filter in from the south as well, and that's really a recipe for those storms to start to develop and start to fire. But first, let's look at those temperatures real quick because take a look at this. You see how we have these 
really dark orange colors, moving to these cooler green colors. That's what we call a temperature gradient. When you go from those warmer temperatures all the way to those cooler temperatures over a certain period of time, and that's the change in those temperatures. Now, right now, we have warmer temperatures to our uh, east, and then as we move past the cold front, cold front situated right about here, you're going to have the warmer temperatures at ahead and the cooler ones behind. So you can just get a little tease for that cooler weather starting to move in. And of course, once more, ahead of a cold front, you see those wind shifts as well, usually moving towards fr from the south up towards the cold front itself. And you can see this right here, Mariana checking in with us with a northwesterly wind. Now that's indicative of the front passing right about here. You can almost draw a line where the cooler temperatures are as well as those wind uh, speeds starting to switch around from the northeast. Now here it is, satellite and radar showing where that boundary is all the way through the northeast. I talked about it earlier, the rain starting to move in. Probably going to be a rather soaking wet evening for you out there. So if you're heading home from work a little bit late tonight, please be careful and watch the roadways very carefully. And if you feel so inclined to head out on a boat, probably not the best idea right now with those strong storms moving in. Look at these winds, 15 to 20, but this is tomorrow as that starts to move past. The winds are gonna still stick with us with the choppy waters and the possibility of some scattered showers as well through the day, but those will start to clear through the evening hours. Now, if you do head out there, watch out. There could be some small craft advisories for you out on the waters. But tonight's forecast, we've been talking about it all show long. You might want to stay inside for this one. Do your homework inside. It's still a Wednesday night. Get some of that done because it will be a rainy one out there once those storms start to move in. Grab that rain jacket because you'll need it out there. Temperature's really not too cold uh, just yet, but that'll start to shift around. Tomorrow's forecast as well, looking at 57 degrees. Stronger showers in the morning. Uh, it's starting to clear towards the afternoon hours, but we'll be watching the, uh, the radar as well for you here a little bit longer. But if you're taking a look at your Thursday planner, you're heading out 8 a.m. classes, rain is in forecast, cool temperatures, be ready for a little bit of a miserable start, but those will start to clear as the day, at least the rain starts to clear towards the evening. So 12 o'clock, still sticking around, 5 o'clock, that's starting to move on out of our area. So let's look at the extended look. The puddle duckies is there because we do have quite a few puddles to deal with on Thursday. Getting ready for the sunshine on Friday, gorgeous day. Saturday, a little bit of a chance of rain, but look at that, Sunday through next Wednesday, Really gorgeous, sunny conditions. But now we're going to end the show with a great finale from Colleen and Nicole. Thanks, Matt. We love that puddle ducky. That's a great, great touch to the seven day. Completely agree. <laughs> makes, the, makes the rain a little bit more happy, yes, honestly. Yes, it does. So on a serious note, today earlier there was an EF2 tornado hit near Alabama along Dixie Alley. Luckily, nobody was injured, and there is a lot of cool videos that are out on the internet about it. And now let's take a look back to the rubber ducky. Oh, it's going to be very rainy Thursday, and as Saturday, a little bit overcast, but Sunday, Monday, Tuesday should be clear, no clouds in the sky. Let's hope that it remains that way. Yes, and now we look into our social media. Come like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter slash FSU Weather. Yes, and like us on Facebook, retweet, and if you did not know if Groundhog Shadow did show or not, it did not show. So that means there will be more winter to come. And so what are you, what are you gonna do in the rain? Um, probably uh, stay, stay inside. inside. Yeah, <laughs> definitely stay right. inside. Now thank you and have a good night.